At Charleston Southern University, you'll find dozens of classrooms, each holding stories of friendships being formed, callings being found, and memories being made. But none as much as LM 104, known more commonly as the CSU Black Box Theater. And the man behind this is Thomas Keating. For this project, we've gathered students, past and present, to share their thoughts about Keating. Um, home. Safe. Intimate. And magical. Competitive. Home. Magical. Dark. Freedom. Versatile. Adventure. The floor is lava. Unrealized potential. Unexpected. Uh, comfortable? Home. I was sitting down in the black box with my actors and I got to see them talk about the characters that I created in a real way and that was the moment when I realized that writing and writing about people and writing about um, situations that people had gone through was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Keating actually allowed me to study for my nursing exams during rehearsals. So I'd be sitting in the corner with my massive textbooks and he would just give a, give a, a little smile over at me with that knowing look. And I always felt very honored that he would allow me to um, both pursue my education and pursue my passion of acting and he was just very gracious. One time we did musical improv in acting the song and Keating was, he stepped into our scene and it was me and Devin and we, uh, he was like the mailman and he was filling the space and he held out a note for like four hours and it was hilarious. The first time I ever saw Keating walk on his hands, but then also when I got to walk on my hands with Keating and have movement class with um, just me, Paige and Keating. When we would come in uh, after rehearsals for King Lear, we would come in here and we would play Foursquare and Keating would kill us at it. Getting engaged in here, uh, whenever I was thinking of places to propose to my wife Jordan at, the Black Box Theater was really the only option from day one, because just for both of us, we had met so many of our friends in here, and through classes with Keating or productions we were in, we had met so many of our dear friends, as well as learned so much about who we were in this room. I remember being intimidated just because I knew he was also the director. I'm pretty sure it was for one of the classes that I walked in. And I remember being really intimidated, but I remember by the end of the class just being really kind of, it was kind of laughable how I felt in the beginning because he's so goofy. I do actually. It was during my audition at West Side Story. And I met Keating and Luke in the same night. And um, I remember walking in and being like, there's no way I'm going to get cast in this show. Um, and I was very terrible at my singing audition, and I got cast. All because of Keating. I was a senior uh, in high school at Ashley Ridge, and I wasn't going to go to college, uh, but one of my teachers told me to at least apply to one, and he told me to apply here, and so I decided to see a show called, it was called The Actor's Nightmare. And I watched that, and I thought it was really funny, and I wanted to meet Keating just because I heard so much about him from my teacher. Uh, and he was really nice. He wasn't what I expected at all. I thought he was going to be kind of intimidating and scary. Um, but he was very welcoming and I was really excited to go to CSU after that. And I came in and uh, you know Keating is being himself which is which was great. I was like, yes, this this guy is going to teach me stuff. This guy's like bouncing off the walls and super fun and energetic and engaging. And this this is going to be great. This is this is why I decided to come to this school and study this. Um, this, this guy right here, basically. Keating introduced himself and just was himself up in front of the classroom. And I was uh, completely taken in. And by the end of that semester, I had added uh, communications with a theater emphasis as a second major. So meeting Keating really just 
changed my academic career and also just the way that I look at life. The first moment I met Mr. Keating, he was riding a skateboard um, past the lake. I'm just kidding, no, that's not when I first met him. I first met him, I believe in the introduction to theater class. Uh, I remember that one moment he has like a, he has like that door, I believe like on the right side or the left side that says, do not open, not an exit. And I remember he was, he was giving a speech or he was playing a character and he just like bum rushed the door. And when he did that, it caught me off guard because I was like, okay, now the alarm is gonna go off, but it didn't. Yeah, I, I remember that moment. But it was an old woman in King Lear, Lottie in Enchanted April. Anybody's in West Side Story, and a close runner-up is Wendy in Peter Pan. Probably Jojo in Susical. Uh, Gloucester and King Lear. And the bus boy and she loves me. Cordelia in um, King Lear. The Fool in King Lear. Stormbreaker in Shakespeare in Suburbia. Playing Gertrude in the musical Susical. It's Alex Winters. Another Antigone. Action in West Side Story. The things that he taught me for the stage bowled over into real life. Um, confidence, just being unapologetically you. Never say just because you need to be firm and true in what you really mean when you say things, both in acting and in the real world. Do what you're doing, but do it better. Keating taught me to always uh, be yourself and not be ashamed of who you are. Keating has taught me oh so much, uh, but I think the one of the main things would be to to embrace who you are and not to hide it, to use it to fuel the character instead of wearing a character as a mask, uh, both on the stage and in life. That was probably one of the biggest lessons Keating taught me, and it's I've taken it with me far past college and I'm grateful to him for that. I think he was one of the first people that like got me to slow down and realize that there's more to life than um, what needs to be done. He would stop and be like, Lydia, can you handle this? Are you sure? Um, and that was good. Good for me to remember that my heart is more important sometimes than the thing that ne things that need to be done in life. One that stood out the most to me was when we were doing <clears throat> an exercise and he asked me what my character was either doing or thinking and I was just like oh my character is just doing this and he was like hey don't use that word and I was just like oh what word he was like just he's like you're not just doing something you are doing something and I was like oh my gosh I was like it changed everything I was like I am doing this and that just kind of transferred to a lot of things <clears throat> that I was doing in my life I wasn't just doing them I was like oh, I'm gonna go do this it just changed my perspective on that Keating, you are one of the most selfless people I have ever met. And everything you've done for me over the years, I've always kept it in mind. And you are an inspiration to me in my daily life. You are someone that I want to emulate in every action. And I appreciate everything you've done for me. Now that I look back on it, every step of the way and every major moment in my life here on campus, um, Keating was there either cheering me on um, correcting me, because obviously I needed a lot of correction, or just helping me find my place. Um, and I am 100% grateful for that. And I will be mentioning him in my Oscar speech. From the first moment, any student, whether an athlete or somebody actually interested in theater, walks into any of your classes, um, your goal is not to make them an amazing actor or uh, super passionate. Um, about theater, but honestly to make them super passionate about something. And I think that a lot of college students walk into this world feeling very empty and not knowing who God is. But honestly, I think you do a really good job sharing the gospel through the arts. And I think the arts can be sometimes seen in Christianity as something that's not valued. And that doesn't really matter because it's not directly sharing the gospel. But you truly have showed me what it means to actually take something that the world views or Christianity views as maybe not um, very important, but showing that, hey, things matter, like doing, you've got to be carefully taught um, 
or doing diving into the wreck and, and highlighting things that do matter. You're like a crazy cool uncle that's always there and you're just kind of waiting to see what's going to come out of his mouth next. So thanks. And also an inside joke that you probably don't know, but Kayla and I, whenever you would do something or say something that was typically Keating, we would always say TK to make fun of you, like a joking way. But then like senior year, whenever it was like our last class, we looked at each other and we just started crying and we said TK. So thanks for making us cry. Thank you for bringing so many opportunities for the ones who have the big dreams and are going to a small Christian university. Keating is and has always been such an inspiration to me. I know that he will continue to be an inspiration for anyone that he continues to teach. Um, and he's just gonna leave this great big mark on the world. But I always remember you knowing us. You weren't, we weren't just students to you in a class. We were more than that. And you weren't just a professor to us. You were more than that. So good man. I can safely say with 100% conviction that I would not be where I am now in the place that God has called me to be now if it weren't for Keating's influence on my life in the theater program uh, then. And I think that's a testament to Keating's character that um, he has influenced so many people in so many ways whether or not they end up pursuing theater. Like, what do you say to someone who's had such a huge impact in your life? I'm glad that I get to tell you it because I don't think I've ever told you, which is outrageous. I think that you know, but I think it's important to also tell you just how much you mean to me <clears throat> and to everyone. <laughs>